Hi, I'm Scott Olson with Founder Buzz. I'm here with uh, Bill Karpovich from Xenos, and uh, thanks for joining us today, Bill. Oh, my pleasure, Scott. So, uh, you know, I'm actually pretty familiar with Xenos from uh, doing some of my work with uh, Puppet Labs and uh, the open source community, but maybe you could start by uh, introducing yourself and your company. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, Xenos is uh, really the uh, leading operations platform for large scale cloud infrastructure providers. So, whether it be uh, enterprises who are delivering cloud services to their employees, consumer web companies like CNN.com or LinkedIn who are delivering web based services uh, over the cloud, or large service providers like a Rackspace or an AT&T who are delivering uh, infrastructure as a service and other cloud offerings to their customers. Right. And um, now I know that certainly the cloud is fueling a lot of your growth. and. Uh, as you're looking to expand uh, your presence in this space, are there some things that you guys have done that have helped, you know, uh, increase your visibility and business and, and partnerships? Is there are, are there some things that stand out to you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you mentioned your familiarity from the open source community, and certainly uh, we have an open source core product, and then a um, an enterprise edition that has a whole series of value added services for large scale uh, cloud operations. And uh, but what happens is that free, compelling software product that's out there for uh, no charge actually creates quite a bit of awareness and we have uh, tens of thousands of users around the world and, and really becomes the, the foot in the door uh, for Xenos um, in terms of uh, having an opportunity to uh, sell the, the uh, commercial offering. So the open source piece has been really, uh, really fundamental. And when we've also made some good bets and partnerships with folks like uh, VMware and Cisco also who are uh, driving hard uh, into the cloud with with their technologies. As you grow your enterprise edition, does that uh, open source community continue to play a vital role in, in helping you advance and and uh, in your success? Yeah, absolutely. The um, you know the notion of commercial open source has really matured quite a bit now. Uh, certainly, ten years ago and even five years ago, uh, there was a lot of folks still scratching their heads. How do you combine these two things? And um, but people get that now and. The, our, our free edition Xenos Core is the most powerful free open source monitoring tool on the planet and uh, it's, it's incredibly open and extensible where the community plays a key value is number one is they're testing it every day and it's getting uh, really proven in the battleground and then uh, they contribute on the edges. Open source communities are much better not at building core software but at contributing on the edges if there's a uh, a nice and easy way to do that. Uh, you know, certainly the Apple iPhone and the App Store has become the prototype for what you can do if you provide a really nice platform to build on. We have a similar phenomenon that we refer to as Zen Packs, and we have many hundreds that are contributed by our members and that library continues to grow and the enterprise customers get the value of um, those plugins that are that are developed in the community. Yeah, well, I mean that makes a lot of sense and you know, part of Founder Buzz is really trying to help entre entrepreneurs and, and people that are getting their businesses going. And, and one of the things that they do is learn from other people's mistakes as well. So, you know, is there anything that you've done at Xenos that uh, Xenos has, that hasn't panned out the way you'd thought that uh, you would advise people to avoid? Oh my gosh, where do I start? The uh, <laughs> well, I'd say you know certainly things don't uh, pan out uh, exactly as you planned off. And I and I will say that we've been really fortunate in that. Our business strategy and plan has been fairly uh, stable, and meaning, you know, we, we feel like we we had a uh, really good strategy, and it's it's evolved and certainly changed and and so forth. But um, um, you know, we're pleased with how that's uh, occurred. I think you know the, the biggest mistakes are always in the realm of I think uh, when I think about the things I've done right and the things that I'd uh, like to change, invariably the people decisions are at the top of those lists in both yeah. of them. Right, and having a world-class team, and particularly as a founder entrepreneur, you have this um, wacky notion that you can do a lot yourself and you have to get beyond that and, and bring on uh, the professionals and folks who are going to go make it happen. And we've done that with, you know, across the board, whether it be in sales, marketing, service, engineering, finance, and, um, and we just have a, a, a fantastic team. And without them, none of this would be possible. And the times where, you know, certainly your projections aren't always on track and so forth, those things are going to happen. The decisions I could have controlled that I, I would tap back are around people and in two forms. One, waiting too long when you realize the person is not the right person and moving too quickly on a hire because you really feel like, gosh, you may not feel 100% right, but you got to fill that seat and you make a lot of mistakes there. And the cost of those mistakes are not days and, and weeks or months. It's a, you can lose a year in a whole function 
because of making a mistake, going through the process of turning it over. And, and we've certainly done that a couple times. And, and those are the areas where we can control those decisions and, and, uh, and I'll look to do better as we go forward. Well, uh, that's good advice. And I certainly uh, appreciate you sharing your time and your insights. Yeah, my, my pleasure, Scott. Uh, enjoyed it. Great. Thanks a lot.